Welcome back to the garage guys. I'm Damien. This is the Binder Builder. All right, part two. In the last video, I showed you all the prep work and the effort. Oh! That freaking hurt. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Feel Look the at the burn. door. Look at the door. Look at the door. The window. It's sharp. Oh, that's terrible. Look at that, Bella. I do. Okay, now. Hold, can hold, I drop it? No, you can't. Hurry! I'm gonna freaking drop it. You can do this. I believe in you, kid. Oh, mother. No, don't say things like that. Your mom can't help you now. All right, there, you can let go. That went into building the halo style cage. It goes from the firewall up the roof line, across the windshield, and then back to the firewall, all made out of a single 20 foot piece of tube. In this video, I'm probably gonna have you asking, why? And just as you saw, Bella and I really went through a lot of effort to make that tube what it was and we actually got it to fit really well so what's happened since then well, let's recap after cutting off the excess tube i tried putting it in but it was still too long more trimming This time it fit. With the help of Bella from time to time, I pulled the hoop in and out again and again. So I changed gears. After getting back out the test pieces that I used to set up this uh, main hoop, I tack one of the tube sleeves in. It was at this point I realized that I still had the 023 wire in and needed a swap out for the 030. Why? Frankly, it's just easier to weld thicker material with thicker wire. Once the welder was readjusted for the 030, I welded 190 onto the A-pillar crossbar. This was so much easier with the thicker wire. Then I sized it up before tack welding the second 90. After I tacked up the second 90, I made sure that it was positioned properly and that I had the overall width correct. Then I welded the second 90 completely. Now I wanted to solve the problem of holding the halo in place while I did the trimming. All right, I'm using double thick cardboard. As you can see, just to space it off the front windshield and the sides. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that I have, you can see this right there, just to center the hoop inside. I don't want it too close to the, uh, the body. Of course, once it's bolted in and stuff, I probably have some stringers to the body itself um, along the windshield a pillar as well i kind of like the way those look and they hold the actual cage in place and support the uh, body as well in case i take a hit or something of that nature but in all that'll give me a nice cushion and uh now i just got to uh use that i'm going to set that front little part of the halo up and then uh then i can start making uh, the fine trims on the back parts. So yeah. The cardboard made for a nice tight fit and I was able to clamp the bar into place without it falling on me. Using a grinder, I cleaned off the spots on the roof to put some tabs. Then having secured the bar in place, I tack welded the tabs to the roof as well as to the bar. This solidly mounted the bar, which was going to allow me to size up the rearward bars and trim them without needing to struggle with the whole hoop. I then placed more spacers along where the tube was gonna go along the roof line to keep the proper gaps. And this is where I cried a little. Yes, 
This is me chopping up the one piece Halo style hoop. Now I realize that wasn't what I was trying to do in the first place. I did want to keep it all one piece, but without an extra pair of hands or some proper jigs to hold the hoop in place, I really didn't have much choice. Then taking the rear spreaders from the one piece Halo, I held them up and started the fine trimming. As you can see, I can actually hold it up, mark where I needed to trim, and do the trimming without having to climb in and out of the bug. This was a welcome pace. Time to cut some angle for where I'm going to mount the hoop to the rear firewall. All right, guys, just real quick. Um, putting in the, uh, the spreader bars, that's or the, the back legs to the halo, and I decided I'm gonna land them on a little piece of angle. I got a piece of angle that I'm gonna hit right onto that, and then it'll bolt through. Now, there's gonna be a down piece down to the floor to keep it strong, but it, that'll tie to the back of the body. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's my plan for the, uh, how to tie that back. I'm just gonna be sizing and trimming these spreaders to get them to the right length and thing, and then I'll weld everything up. Here's me marking where I needed to do the tighter bends to keep it nice and tight. After bending it and testing the fit, I cut the notch for the rear mount. Then I cut the tube the length. I got the first one in. Just wanted to just go over it real fast. It's uh, not too much, but why not? Check it out. So, got that little angle iron put in there. I got to trim up that to so that it fits on that angle iron just perfect. And then I'll be able to push that forward, keeping that too. I'm using, I know this is not exactly a scientific method of spacers, but two thicknesses of uh, cardboard there. And there you go. And then all the way up, two thicknesses of cardboard two thicknesses of cardboard around and then back the other way. So, and I've got a little bit of length. Of course, you see the, the slug in there. Um, don't mind the tape, that'll come out when I'm ready to weld. And I just need to now take this out and make the other one look just like it. And then once it's done, I'll put two slugs of cardboard right there. And that way it holds the position. Then I can measure side to side. Sorry for the slow progress, but between uh, working and only having a couple hours a day to do this stuff, and frankly, as you could probably notice, I am sweating up a storm. That's because real feel here in Arkansas is about 105, 115, somewhere in between there. Um, it could be as low as 100, but it is super humid, and frankly, it, you can't work very long without having to go in and cool off a little bit, especially when you're a big fat guy like me. So what are you going to do? Let's get back on this and make the other side. And once that's done, I could make the, the all of the, the B pillar. I'm going to do all the, the hoop stuff, the C pillar cross, the B pillar cross. And then I'm going to take this whole thing out. And then we're going to uh, weld it all up, paint it. Now, I just wanted to show you guys something real quick. If you look right in here, see that pitting? Not pitting, but starting to surface rust already. Um, and that's just the humidity in the air here in Arkansas. Now you guys out in California in the West where the climate is dry, your the metal just doesn't rust on you like that. But here in the South, it does. As soon as you clean off the, uh, the protective layer of oil that they put on the metal, 
they start immediately start rusting. So, uh, so if you ever make fun of me because I'm just painting everything all of a sudden, it's that's that because even my bender, which is brand spanking new, uh, only a couple months old, is starting to get a little surface rust. So I'm starting to wipe it with oils after I'm done just to protect it. Uh, I'll show that to you real fast. So you could really see it's starting to get a little bit of rust, little marks, little rust starting on it. I mean, look at that. I didn't even use this side yet. And it's already starting to get rusty. And uh, so, yeah, it's not a good one. I already cleaned it off. So yeah, there you go. See the little rusty parts? I cleaned it off already, wiped it down with some oil, but yeah, it's, it's already starting to rust itself. So like I said, um, Make fun of me all you want for painting everything halfway through and not waiting till the end, but now you know why. Then using the side that I just finished, I held it to the second side to copy the bends as well as the trimming to make it fit. All right, I just wanted to show you what we've been doing. Went ahead and got the bars in. Kind of matches, not bad. Goes across, completes the halo, and then back. You notice I left a little bit of space in between. That's because after I get the uh, interior batting in and stuff, it's going to come out a little bit, and that'll be fine. Now I know what you're thinking. I thought you were gonna build it out of one piece. Actually I did, and then I cut it up because do you have any idea how hard it is to hold this thing up when you don't have any help and stuff like that? So, um, chopped it up. Uh, didn't wanna do that, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so now the next thing is I'm gonna add the, the top bars across the B pillar and the C pillar. Then I'll pull the whole thing out, weld it up outside so I can get the tops, get full 360 degree welding up there, make sure everything is 100% tight and good. And then uh, also put in the diagonals, um, the bracing there. Then once that's all in, um, I can actually start putting the pan back in and then add the drops for the B pillar and the A pillar and the C pillar. I'm gonna put a drop there as well. After measuring and marking the C-pillar crossbar, I use the grinder to cope it. Similar to the C-pillar, I follow the same steps for the B-pillar crossbar. Okay. 
here's what we got so far. Um, as you can see, the uh, it goes from down here all the way up around the front of the windshield and then all the way back, landing on these uh, L brackets. I did a little query online. You guys uh, confirmed that I don't want to put it exactly where the B pillar is, and that's because uh, just in case I want to put my seat further back, I'm six foot and uh, it's only going to be a two seater. I'm not too worried about that. I just got to make a bar that goes across here. Then I'm going to make two bars that go front, forward to back. I'm actually considering not doing the forward to back thing. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one yet. I do want to go uh, diagonals from the B pillar cross to the C pillar cross to the corners just to kind of make a big spider web up there and uh, that will make it nice and solid up top I got a little bit more coping to do on that side make it nice and pretty this is all just mocked up I'm trying to figure it all out um, and then yeah you know see I did want to show you something pretty cool though <laughs> all right welcome to inside the boog um, I did want to show you guys this check this out all right so this is a drop piece from the uh, from some of the practice trials of trying to get things and I was going to put it up in here but it is just a little too short so what am I going to do with it? Well that's when I was like just in here playing around and this is what I saw. Check this out. Heck yeah, a little more coping up top and it'll go down and then I can straight down it into the heater channel. Do both sides. And then that got me thinking, huh, you can get to this bend. It's kind of hard to hold this thing up and do this at the same time. But uh, as you can see, I get to about that bend right there. And it'll go straight down into this, which I can plate and then have bars coming up from the pan. Uh, trying to figure out trying to figure out the best way of doing this. Uh, so anyway, one for sure. We are gonna go one to the back like so. And then that one is going to go, this another one's gonna go sideways like so. And then we have bars coming up like so. And then forward like so. And then one like so. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that should do. That should do it. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. With the B and C pillar cross tubes at the right length, I did some final measurements before welding them in place. Then, using some miscellaneous drops, I sized up the pieces needed to complete the diagonal bracing, paying particular attention to the distance to the roof.
while playing around with the tube and looking how things fit, I saw this. Here's how the rolled tube fits of the a as an A-pillar down tube. I am super tempted to run the down tubes like this. The same holds true for the B-pillar as well. I just need to figure out if one, if I like landing them to the body, and two, how to gusset them to the main tube chassis structure, which includes the pan tubes, the seat mounts, the front and rear suspension, as well as the engine cage. But we'll tackle that in a future video. With my curiosity satisfied, I pulled the halo structure out and started welding it up. After completely welding everything, I let the structure cool on my bench and called it a day. Well guys, that's the end of this video. I hope I'm not spending too much time in all the details. I know I'd be able to crank out more videos if I just did an overview, but I kind of like doing the whole detailed route. But if you find this video useful or even entertaining, go ahead and hit the like button for me, would you? Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video where we're actually going to introduce a new and important shop tool as well as complete all the diagonal bracing and so forth of the Halo. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Damien and this is The Binder Builder.